Hi everyone, I am Krista Turnis and I am the principal investigator of the contract that was partially funded by Biomaid to bring you this course, which is a biosecurity sequence screening training course for bioengineers. And while we developed this course with bioengineers in mind, we definitely welcome anyone with an interest in these topics to join us here. And we look forward to getting everyone's feedback. So thank you so much for taking the time to check out this online course. The objectives for this course are for participants to become familiar with important biosecurity concepts and regulations, as well as gain experience by performing sequence screening with open source software that we're going to walk you through. We hope that you'll learn, learn how to interpret sequence screening results, and we encourage you to complete all portions of this course. So please watch all the lectures, participate in all the exercises and case studies, and try running the software on your own if you're able to. The software that we're going to use for this course does require Linux servers, and if you do not have access to Linux or aren't comfortable with running command line tools, there is no pressure to do that. We also provide on our GitHub site the outputs from the software so you can watch the examples of how the software is run and then you can see what the outputs look like and you can walk through the interpretation portions of the course with us despite not having generated the results yourself. But either way, we encourage you to jump in and participate in interpreting the outputs. And we also encourage you to fill out the pre and post course surveys. We will provide links to that and this at the end of this introduction. And then at the conclusion of the course, we'll have a post course survey. And spoiler alert, the pre and post course surveys have exactly the same questions. So you'll be asked the same questions before the course and then again after the course. And the idea is that we'd like to see how your answers change after you watch and participate in all the different course material. This helps us out a lot, it gives us feedback, and it helps us to be able to gain funding to continue to improve the course in the future. So please do participate in those course surveys. It, it helps make the material better moving forward. A big uh, note and announcement that I'd like to make is that the views, conclusions, software, databases, and all of the material in this course are solely from the authors, and they do not represent the views or opinions or endorsement of the U.S. government or any government agency. This is just coming from the authors. It is solely our opinion, but we believe our opinion could be helpful for you, and our work could be helpful for you, which is why we're making it openly available. So please keep that in mind as you go through this material. I also wanted to raise awareness that during the original recording of this course in March of 2023, the HHS guidance was slightly different than it is today when we're making these online materials in October 2023 because there was a new guidance document that was released. So some of the lectures that you'll see, such as those from Dr. Matt Sharkey, were recorded back in March of 2023, before the updated guidance document came out, I definitely encourage you to take a look at this guidance document, which is linked below. And the reason for that is that there are some substantial changes to the guidance that happened in October of 2023. Those changes include looking at sequences of concern. So rather than just pathogen genomes or toxin sequences, we are now looking at anything that could be considered a sequence of concern that might introduce or contribute to pathogenicity or harm based on its function. So please keep that in mind. It's also very relevant to this course because I believe we have the only open source software available to help label sequences of concern. Speaking of which, to our knowledge, our software is the only open source version of a software to to do this type of thing and label sequences of concern. <clears throat> that labeling is done through machine learning and manual curation. And this is also the only training course of its kind. I don't know of another biosecurity training course that's out there in an open way that helps people access software and learn how to interpret those software outputs for biosecurity purposes. Um, there's often a hesitation to do that because of concerns about dual use. So in this introductory lecture, I also wanted to touch on reasons why we've decided to make our material openly available. That material includes our software, which is 
readily available and installable on Conda and other ways of, of downloading and installing bioinformatics software. Our database is also freely available and this training is freely available. And the reasons that we've decided to be so transparent and open about sharing our work is that we believe this fills a gap for legitimate basic research purposes. There is not a lot out there in this space that's that's free and accessible to people. So we felt like this was really filling a gap there. The sequence of concern ontology labels that you'll hear about throughout this course were developed by our team of scientists. They were not endorsed by any regulatory authority or government agency. These again are just our opinions in how things should be labeled. And all of the labeling was done based on publicly available data. So publications and experimental evidence based on functions. Um, that's what went into our labeling as well as our machine learning processes. All of that is published, it's out there, it's, it's undergone scientific review, but it's not specifically endorsed by any regulatory authority. So please do not take anything in this course as being something that anyone other than the authors is recommending that you use. This is simply a tool that we are putting out there to fill a gap. And while individual sequences of concern are labeled by Seek Screen, I wanted to make it clear that there are no automated threat calls made by Seek Screen, and that is a very important distinction. So our Seek Screen software and databases will take users through taxonomic assignments and functional calls and characterization, which includes adding these pathogenic ontology labels to sequences of concern. But we do not go so far as to say this sequence is a threat, this is not a threat. We don't do green, yellow, red classifications with seek screen or any other high level categorization of threat. That is something that is very nuanced and challenging and specific to different end users and, and what they might be doing, their application, other metadata and considerations need to go into that final threat call. That's not something that we do, but we believe that we're giving you very important fundamental information that helps you as a user to make those calls. And that's something that we're gonna work through in this course, but I believe that's also something that is worth mentioning here because if we were making automated threat calls and we were making that publicly available, I think that would be under a higher degree of scrutiny as far as um, dual use and, and if we should be making all of that fully transparent. So hopefully that made sense. All of that said, we believe that the concepts involved in making threat calls and making these final determinations are very important to teach people. So we need people to understand how to do this, what the process is, what the considerations are, and this is all going to help be um, transparent and promote good biosecurity practices. If you have any questions about that, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm, I'm happy to talk with you more about any of these concerns that anyone has. Wherever you are coming from today, we believe that this course is going to be valuable to you and you're going to get something out of it. So if you are a bioinformatician running in-house command line tools, I definitely think this course is going to be useful to you because we're gonna be telling you all about an open source tool that you can integrate into your pipeline for biosecurity sequence screening. So you will enjoy hearing about SeekScreen and learning more about how you can use that and how to interpret its outputs. If you are a biologist who is interested in interpreting outputs either from commercial software or from open source software like SeekScreen, I think you will also get something out of this course. Even if you're not going to be running the software yourself at the command line, it's very important as a biologist that you understand how the interpretation process goes because that may be something that you're asked to weigh in on as a subject matter expert or maybe you're going to be asked to help determine how that automated process is going to work for your institution in making those threat calls. And these pieces of information that we're going to share with you are going to be important factors in that. So I think understanding those concepts is going to be great for you to um, work through examples of and, and learn how others are interpreting these outputs. That's going to be a wonderful experience for you and the work that you're doing, which is incredibly important. If you are a commercial entity who happens to be outsourcing everything 
from, from sequence screening, the mechanics of it, to actually interpreting the outputs if you are hands-off in, in all of those categories, I think this is still going to benefit you because from a management perspective, I think it's really important to understand what you're managing. At, at least at some, some level, you should know what's going on. And that's going to help you to be a better manager of what's happening. And when things are complex or the answers aren't clear, you're going to have a better appreciation for why that's happening. And you're going to help guide decision makers through the process that needs to happen when those results come back as yellow or ambiguous. And so if you are in that boat, I think you're also going to benefit from this course and just learning more about all of this and seeing how you can be a better manager of this whole process. I definitely want to acknowledge everyone that has contributed to this course. Thank you so much to all of my collaborators, including Todd from Rice University, Kevin from ACLID, Todd's team of graduate students and postdocs who have contributed to Seek Screen Software, particularly in Byte, who spent a good deal of his PhD writing this code for us. Thank you, Invite, as well as Gene Godbold from Signature Science, who has done a great deal of biocuration, which we then use to help expand on with machine learning. He continues to do biocuration and pioneer the way for different ontology frameworks for describing pathogenesis. So thank you so much, Gene, for all of your work. You'll hear a guest lecture from him as well, in addition to Todd and Kevin throughout this course. Beth from Biomade is also going to give a lecture. She is the director of 4S, and you will hear more about her role and how this is relevant to Biomade shortly. And I also wanted to thank all of our different contract program management team and, and technical leadership team at Biomade. Thank you to Steve, Louise, Kristen for all of the work that you've done to help support us and make sure that this course is staying on track and, and staying relevant to the bioengineering community. And special thanks to Dr. Matthew Sharkey of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services for giving a guest lecture during this course. We appreciate you helping to promote and teach the concepts in your guidance document and continue to, to push the community towards best practices in biosecurity for sequence screening. So thank you for taking the time to share those insights with us. The course agenda for today is listed on this slide, but I definitely encourage you to go to our GitHub repository where on the, the readme at the, um, the GitHub site, you'll see an overview of all of our different lectures that are going to happen, as well as the exercises and case studies, different material associated with that, the slides from people's lectures, whatever you might want to see, I think you'll find it on our GitHub repository. So please check that out for more detail. And also, at this moment, I would encourage you all to go fill out the pre-course survey. The link is below, and I would love to hear everyone's feedback. Um, there's an open comments section at the bottom. If none of the questions encompass what you want to communicate to us, we would love to hear whatever you want to share and feedback at the end. So thank you so much for taking the time to do that. And again, I hope you enjoy this course. We put a lot into it, and we really believe it's filling a gap where not a lot else is out there to help teach people how to do this. So I hope it benefits you. I think it will. All right. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon.